Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be discussing another examples for optimization problems for applications of maxima and minima. So again, this is under applications of derivatives and focusing on the maxima and minima. So last time we've already discussed the steps of solving maxima and minima. And here are the steps. Again, first, draw a figure, determine with variable, the dependent variables is to be maximized or minimized. Next step is to formulate an equation, reduce to one variable, and after it's already reduced to one variable, you have to differentiate and equate to zero. So here are some applications that involves application of maxima and minima. We can be, it can be applied in plane and solid geometry, can be applied in curves, number problems, economics, and some other miscellaneous applications. So let's answer some example we have here. A rectangular piece of tin is 125 millimeter by 200 millimeter. An open box is to be made by cutting equal squares at the corners and turning up the sides. Find the volume of the largest box that can be made. So from here, it is said that we have to, to, to draw or we have a rectangular piece of tin. So let's say for example, this is our uh, rectangular piece. So the dimension of this one as indicated is 125 by 200. So let's say this is our 125 And this one is our 200 millimeter. So here it says that an open box is to be made by cutting equal squares at the corner. So let's say, for example, we'll be cutting equal squares here at the corner. So assuming this is just equal squares. So we'll be cutting this one. So this will be cut out, this corners will be cut out. So if we cut out this one and then we would turn up the sides, it would form like a an open box. Okay, so it would probably look like this one. So the, the top is open because we are we just turned up the sides of this one, this one, and this one. So next is we'll just write the given that we have here. So meaning to say this side is already cut out, this side as well, the corner is already cut out. So here, our dimension here already it's not 125 anymore because we've already cut out and turned up the sides. So meaning to say, there are two X's that we have cut out. So meaning to say, the dimension of this one now is 125 minus 2X. The same with our length. This would be now 200 minus 2X since again, we have cut out two X's on the corner. And as we know, since we cut this out, this is the dimension of this one is x. This one is x, meaning to say our height is also x. So from this one, we can already, uh, we've already drawn, drawn our figure. So meaning to say we can proceed to the next step, which is to determine with variable and formulate an equation. So from here, it is said that we have to find the volume. So we have to find the formula for the volume of the rectangle because this is a rectangular piece. So as we know, the, the volume for the rectangle is equivalent to length times width times height. From the, from the figure, we can identify our length is equivalent to 200 minus 2x. So let's just substitute that here. Our width is 125 minus 2x, and our height is just x. 
So from that, let's just distribute this one, multiply this with each other. So this would be equal to 25,000 X minus 400 X squared minus 250 X squared plus 4 X cubed. So again, this is already the, the, the multiplication of the terms inside. And then simplifying this one, we have 25. And simplifying and rearranging this one according to the exponent. So we have 4x cubed minus 650x squared plus 25,000x. So as you can see, we only have one variable here in our equation, which is x. So meaning to say, we can already differentiate our equation. So this is our equation. And then, since this is already reduced to one variable, so we can already derive that one. So the derivative of our v with respect to x is equivalent to 12x squared minus 1,300x plus 25,000. So after we have derived, it is said that we have to equate to zero. So from here, equate to zero and then find the value of our variable. So equate to zero, this is equivalent to zero. So after that, we can already factor this out. So we can find by calculating our x sub 1 is equivalent to 83.33 millimeter and our x sub 2 is equivalent to 25 millimeters. Okay, so this is already the value for our x, but we have to determine which value would give the largest box. So from the second derivative test, we can, uh, again, by second derivative test, we can test which value can give the largest box. So at x is equal to... Now, for the second derivative, so we have to find the second derivative of our equation first before we can substitute. So, if this is our first derivative, our second derivative is equivalent to 24x minus 1,300. So, after this, at x is equivalent to 83.33. So, substituting it here, we have 24 times 83.33 minus 1,300, that would give us the result of 699.92. And since this is a positive number or greater than zero, meaning to say this is minimum. Again, if it's greater than zero, if the result of your second derivative test is greater than zero, that is minimum. So, um, x is equal to 83.33 does not give the largest box. So, we have to reject that one. Now, at x is equal to 5, let's test if this would give the largest box. So, at x is equivalent to 25, substitute that, 24 times 25 minus 1,300, that would give us a result of negative, a negative number. Negative 700, less than zero. So meaning to say this is maximum. So our x or the value of our x is 25. If you would also try to substitute your values of x's, from our length times width times height equation, you will see that x sub 1 or the 83.33 does not give the largest value because it would just give you a negative value. So meaning to say, the value or the, the value for our x that would give the largest box is 25 millimeters.
Next one, we have another example. Find the most economical proportion of a circular cylindrical can with top whose capacity is 128 pi cubic meter. So, since again, this is circular cylindrical can, so mura siya og um, dilata. So, let's draw the figure. Let's draw the figure here. This is a circular cylindrical can. So, let's say that is the circular cylindrical can. So, we have to find the economical proportion. So, meaning to say the minimum proportion that would give the capacity of 128 pi cubic meter. So, we do not know what is the value of our radius, what is the value of our height. So, from here, we'll just um, uh, take that as x for the radius and y for the And Y for our height for the cylindrical can. Next one is to identify the, the variables or identify the equation. So, since we are given the volume, so meaning to say we'll be including the volume here. So, volume of the circular cylindrical can is equivalent to uh, 128 pi cubic meter and as we know the volume for the circular cylindrical can is pi r squared h or let's just have that in terms of x and y so we'll replace r and h by x and y so we have x squared and y and as you can see it involves two variables so meaning to say we have to reduce it first to single variable or one variable only. So we have to um, find the other formula that would um, that would reduce this formula into a single value. Since our V is equivalent to 128, so let's just have that as 128 pi. That is equivalent to pi x squared y. So let's just isolate our y. So, that is pi x squared, pi x squared, cancel the pi, cancel the pi, cancel this one. So, we to say our y is equivalent to 128 x squared. So, this is our first equation. Now, we have to find other um, formula that we can apply this y here. So, as we know, our cylindrical can has a... Has an, has an area, so we'll just get the formula for the area for the circular cylindrical can. So that is A is equivalent to 2 pi RH plus 2 pi R squared. Since our R is understood as X and H for the Y, so let's just replace that. So we have 2 pi XY plus 2 pi x squared. So we already have the value for the y, so let's just replace that here. So we have a is equivalent to 2 pi x times 128 over x squared plus 2 pi x squared. So let's go ahead and multiply this one. 2 times 128, that is 256 pi. This one will be cancelled. One of this will be cancelled. So we have 256 pi over x plus 2 pi x squared. So since this is already reduced to one variable, we can already derive this one. So the derivative of this is equivalent to negative 256 pi over x squared plus 4 pi x. And then after we have derived, again, we have to equate that to zero. And then after we have equated this to zero, we have to find the value of our variable. So we have to eliminate first the fraction by multiplying that with the denominator. So we have negative 256 pi plus 4 pi x cubed. That is equivalent to zero. So after this, let's move to the other side, the values or the term that has no variable. So we have 4 pi x cubed 
is equivalent to 2, 5, 6 pi. Divide both sides by 4 pi to isolate x. So we have x cubed is equivalent to 256 divided by 4, that is 64. Since this is still cubed, we have to eliminate the cube by uh, multiplying with the cube root for each side. So meaning to say for this one, our value is, of x is equivalent to 4 meter. So we only have one value for the x, so that is already our economical proportion for x. Now remember, we still have to solve for the proportion or the dimension of our y. So let's just substitute that using the uh, equation 1. So we have y is equivalent to 128 times 4 squared, so that is equivalent to 8 meters. So meaning to say, the economical proportion for the circular cylindrical can is 4 for the radius and for the length that is 8. So meaning this, therefore, economical proportion, it is economical if the top and the length or, or the height is equal. Why is it equal but our value for x is 4? Again, you have to remember this is just a 4. So meaning to say our diameter is 8. So if our diameter for the top is 8 and the length is 8, meaning to say that would give you the most economical proportion. Okay, so... That's it for additional example under applications of maxima and minima. So I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you everyone and God bless us all.